Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Today we're going to be talking with our teacher, our sheikh, who's here to help us understand Islam, the way of all the prophets, that way of submission and surrender, not to your desires, not to a man, not to a woman, but the one who created man and woman, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We're going to be trying to distinguish Islam from back home cultures. It's kind of got intertwined. You got some things, some confusion. So we want to make sure that we have the blueprint because we want to do things right. We want to do things according to how the Creator wants us to do things. We don't want to follow our desires and get even more confused. So to help unravel the confusion, when we come back, Sheikh Tofiq Chaudhry here on The Dean Show. Be right back. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. That's great, no problem. How have you been? Very good, thank you. I'm very excited that you're back with us here on the Dean Show. Mashallah. You're very busy traveling, educating the people. I try to be, thank you. Exactly. You dedicated your life to this beautiful way of life, Islam. Wallahi, you know, uh, I'm actually indebted, indebted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to my families, to my parents for actually being able to do it, you know. And you were, last time as we spoke, you were also pursuing your doctorate degree, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In medicine, yes. So I, I can call you Dr. Chaudhry now, huh? <laughs> uh, I prefer you not to, just call me brother. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Perfect. so exactly. my, my uh, sheikh, our teacher, tell us now, we need to understand a little better because people mm. know that Islam is that way of life, the way of life of all the messengers, that way of submitting yourself entirely to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes. But now we have some things that are cultural practices, so there might be some confusion to some of the lay people because now there's some things that might have developed over the years and have gotten mixed up with Islam. So we want to talk about a basic blueprint so we don't get to mixing things up like a buffet. So what is culture and what is accepted with the normal cultures of society and what is clear Islam and what can mix and what can't mix. Let's talk about this for a second. Right. Please. It's, I think, a really, really good question because unfortunately what's happened these days is that uh, people have obviously been born into Muslim families and because of the, the ultimate, the total lack of, of Islamic education, uh, and the fact that people don't even know the basics of their religion sometimes. Yes. People have forgotten the, the difference between what is culture and what is Islam. So we find, for example, um, in Muslim countries these days, uh, people pray not because they really want to pray or because it's, it's in their heart to pray, uh, but really it's because it's culture. You know, mm -hmm. it's time to pray, the adhan's coming. You know, what do people generally do? They just go to the mosque and pray, so we might as well do that. Yes. Or people, for example, wear the hijab, not because it's... Uh, it's a, they're actually doing it because to, they really want to protect themselves from others mm -hmm. uh, or, to, or to really be covered for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. But they're doing it simply because it's part of their culture and hijab uh, has just become a convenient way of dressing to, to cover up your, uh, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. And so in reality, we need to break that barrier. And to break that barrier, uh, a lot of education needs to happen. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, da'wah needs to happen to people who do know the truth, need to go out and actually say that to people. Uh, and a lot of uh, a clarity needs to come into the whole picture of exactly what basic amount of knowledge needs to be there in, in the minds of people so that you can break the difference. So that really depends upon the society that we're talking about. Uh, we know that in Islam, a certain amount of basic knowledge is obligatory upon every single person. So what is that basic amount of knowledge that is obligatory on every person? Well, we know that we need to know the basics of our belief, we need to know the basics of our actions, the things that we need to do. We need to know the basics of any action that the community or the people do uh, 
that, that they're involved in. Like, for example, before they do business, they need to know about the rulings of business. Before they deal in marriage and divorce, they need to know the rulings of marriage and divorce. Yes. So ultimately, every believer is required to know a certain set basic amount of belief. Uh, knowledge in, in uh, 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 a, a, a certain basic amount of knowledge in belief and a certain basic amount of knowledge in action. And when this is clear in people's minds, then the delineation between what is religion and what is culture will become far more clearer. Because the problem is happening in, in that the most basic things people are mixing up with their culture. So we know, for example, these days, uh, you know, female circumcision, as in, let me give you that example. Yeah. Female circumcision, which is practiced in the African countries, in a way in which the whole clitoris and the whole female genital, external genitals are actually removed. This is something which is totally against the principles of Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, because the goal, they say, is to not let women have excessive desire. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the uh, understanding that is usually given. Yeah. Uh, although in Islam there is no basis for total removal of the, to of the genitalia at all. Because it's something and cultural. That, that is cultural. That is a practice, an African practice that has come into Islam. Yeah. Uh, not uh, come into Muslims mm -hmm. and their practice, right? In the same way, like for example, you might say in India, uh, the example is that in India, we know the Hindus, uh, when they used to marry their daughters off, they had to give money to the husbands. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Islam, it's the other way around. In, in Islam, the, the men have to give a dowry or a marriage gift to the, to the women. It's not the opposite not way around. Not the opposite, not okay. the opposite. And I know, for example, even my own parents, they're Muslims, right? Yes. And when they got married, it was almost like my parents, my mom had to give a gift to my dad, mm -hmm. although my dad didn't accept it. But the point was, it was almost expected mm -hmm. as a cultural practice. And we have many, many similar cultural practices in many things, whether it be times of death, times of marriage, times of divorce, times of you know, prayer and worship, to, you know, whether it be in our, in our uh, Hajj and Umrah. We have so many things which are actually cultural practices that really need to be rooted out. And, and the best way to do that is through education. Now, we put a little flavoring in our coffee. You get the latte, put a little caramel. Mm -hmm. If your steak needs a little bit of salt, you know, to amplify the taste. Mm -hmm. What about with our way of life, this religion, or you, you want to sweeten up, uh, you know, your tea, you put some extra sugar. All right. But if someone argues and said, you know, we're just trying to add some flavor here. We're just trying to, you know, spice things up. Yeah, you know what? Uh, there are two problems here. Mm -hmm. The first problem is that you actually believe that Islam is actually deficient. Okay. or the taste is actually not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. You actually need to sweeten it up or something like mm -hmm. that, right? That's actually claiming that the religion is deficient. Oh. Would you agree? Yeah. That's actually claiming that the religion needs a version two, mm -hmm. uh, or that we need to improve certain things about the religion which is not just to our taste or something. Yeah. That would be claiming that the Prophet did not give his message to us, that the Quran is not complete, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not complete the religion. That would be tremendous tremendous thing to say would mm -hmm. you agree yes this mm -hmm. is why innovation something that is new into the religion is so disliked in our in our deen because not that we don't really want to do, want to do good for the religion what we're saying is is that by actually adding something you're actually claiming something else you're claiming that it's deficient you're claiming that the f that, that just like the food is mm, needs salt so the religion needs needs something else and you have the audacity to say that you think the religion is not complete Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first problem. The second problem is that you, you, you're claiming that the religion doesn't have the sweetness or the religion doesn't have the joy that you're looking for. And that's, that's to say that, that Islam, you know, and we, we hear this sometimes, people say that, you know, religion is all boring, you know, it's not all, yeah. it's not, you know, and we want some fun in it. And there's just no fun in, in Islam. What the reality is, <laughs> you know what, you haven't approached uh, Islam in the right way. You've looked at Islam as a set of rigid laws and guidelines. You haven't looked beyond that. You haven't looked at the beauty of thinking about Allah. You haven't thought about the sweetness of basking in the love of Allah. You haven't thought about, like for example, I remember my Sheikh was, uh, he was asked a question by a man, uh, mm -hmm. and a man was, hey, Sheikh, I've been trying to get married, yes. and you know, I can't get married, and, and I'm having this, this tremendous difficulty. Mm -hmm. And he gave a talk that till now I remember, and he spoke about how a person whose heart is engrossed in the remembrance of Allah finds no need for physical pleasures. Yeah. Right? And by Allah, you know someone whose heart is in, 
in total bliss, thinking about Allah, the day that he will meet him, the day, the day in which he will speak to him alone. And he is standing, sitting and lying, thinking about God and the creation of the heavens and the earth. The one who ponders about the day, the first night in the grave, don't think about the second night in the grave, just the first night in the grave, the one who ponders about it. Wallahi, he is filled with a different sort of thought in his mind, a different sort of attention span. He has a different sort of outlook towards his life. And he, is, he doesn't waste his time looking for distractions. Mm -hmm. Because these things are sometimes mere, mere distractions. We're not saying that in Islam there's no enjoyment, by the way. We're saying that there is tremendous enjoyment. Yeah. The Prophet would, yes. would have competitions with his wives. He would joke around with his wives. In one of the narrations, we hear that the Prophet was sitting with one of his legs in, one, in the house of one of his wives, another leg in the house of another wife. And, and then um, Aisha, anha, she cooked a, a nice meal of, of something called farid, mm -hmm. which, which is uh, meat cooked with uh, bread in a curry. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she brought that to Rasulullah and the Prophet ate a little bit and then he offered it to Safiya who was the other wife of Rasulullah and Safiya said, I'm sorry, I've already eaten. And so Aisha said, no, you're definitely going to eat. And she said, no, I'm sorry, I've eaten. And so Aisha took the food like this, a little bit of food, <laughs> and then she threw it at Safiya and landed on her nose. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, it's an authentic hadith by the yeah. way. And so what do you think the Prophet did? And he also took some food and he threw it at Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> They're having fun. <laughs> They're having fun. No, no, don't have a big food, food fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying is just harmless yeah. fun. Yeah. Harmless fun. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so tell yeah. us now, okay, you know, we see other faiths, they do things to bring the people in. So if the masjids are <coughs> empty and you got some people wanting to be creative, maybe we can bring a band in the masjid. What about this? Things like of this nature. Yeah, um, you know, uh, there are certain things in Islam. I mean, there's a difference between innovation and public good. Yeah. So we know that when the Prophet Sallallahu passed away and the Quran was in different parts, in different areas, yeah. the Quran wasn't collected in one go. So the person can say, hey, the people put the Quran into one, into one piece and they were all different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that allowed and why can't I try and do something which would be for the public, which would bring more good to people, just like you said, yeah. bring more people back into the mosque, so, you know, start all these competitions and all these other things that you're yeah. talking about. Because you see it, you know, you go, one church is competing with the next, so Absolutely. one brings a rap band, the other one brings Absolutely. a hip-hop band, and then uh, it's a competition, Absolutely. and they're filling them up somehow to keep the memberships coming in, so the Muslims see this, Absolutely. and maybe they say, hey, we can get some good ideas. Absolutely. Here. So what we're saying is, mm -hmm. Uh, is that there's no problem with helping Islam but as long as it, is, as it is within the realms and the guidelines of Islam. Yeah. Now we know that for example of course bands and music and dancing and, and free mixing etc. This is not something condoned by Islam. Yeah. But the point is what if someone said okay let's just not do something openly haram but what about doing something openly halal? Like for example like the Prophet's birthday for example. Yeah. Let's celebrate the Prophet's birthday even though the, even though the Prophet didn't do that. Yeah. So and people would justify that by, by saying that hey this is uh, increasing the love for Rasulullah but we try and uh, we, we, we look at it objectively we say hey there's a difference between public good and, and, and an innovation in, a, in, in something that, that is done for the public good mm -hmm. uh, it is first of all condoned by Islam okay second of all a public good is something which does not increase the hardship upon us mm -hmm. if, if anything it decreases hardship upon us mm -hmm. thirdly the public good is something that it, that conforms to the goals and principles of the Sharia. On the other hand, an innovation is something which increases hardship upon us. And an innovation, the reason for its existence already would have existed in the time of Rasulullah but the Prophet didn't do so. Mm -hmm. So therefore for us to claim that we need to do something else to do more, right, mm -hmm. would be an innovation because the cause for its existence already existed at the time of Rasulullah. Yeah. So, so, so for example, we could say, you know, the need for mankind to love Rasulullah also existed far more in the time of Rasulullah mm -hmm. Sallallahu So why should we now celebrate the Prophet's birthday when the Prophet didn't do so at that time? Yeah. Even though the need existed at that time. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So therefore, the, the point is, my friend, uh, that we can try and, and use 101 ideas to increase uh, you know, membership of Islam. We can use 101 different ways and strategies to bring people back into the deen. As long as number one, it doesn't go against our principles yeah. and our values, and number two, number two, as long as it's not real clear innovation. Yeah. In the theme. Right. So, so now, just so the viewers 
will understand what we're saying here is that knowledge is key. So whatever is in the blueprint, this is what we follow. And no one can bring something in that's not sanctioned by the Creator and His last and final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, that's really important to understand is that if a, if a religion doesn't have any firm principles and basis and, and values, mm -hmm. it's not a religion at all. You see, the problem with Christianity these days is that they're redefining the values straight away. They're redefining the principles. Yeah. What we're saying is, no, Islam has set values and set principles and set guidelines. And then everything else can, can, can therefore be looked into about you know, adding, adding certain, certain uh, strategies in order to bring people in. Yeah. As long as the values are right, as long as the principles are there, as long as these things are, are, are clear and, and set yeah. in, in stone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so otherwise you have no ideology. So it's okay now if somebody wants to invent a better way to communicate through some kind of uh, super duty cell phone or someone wants to invent a car that goes faster. This is okay. Absolutely. This kind of technology, this kind of development, innovation is okay. Absolutely. But in the matters of this perfect way of life, Islam, the religion, me and you can't spice it up a little bit. We can't do anything that we think now we're doing better than the Creator. You know what? And if, if there was, you know, we could just follow what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. there would be no need to send a prophet. Okay. There'd be no need to give us a book that would never change. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. There'd be no need to give us a isnad or a chain of narration by which we know that our uh, our our statements for Rasul Islam are correct. Yeah. There'd be no need for all of this. Mm -hmm. We could have just invented what we thought was right, what we felt was right, what we knew was right. Okay. okay. So we're, t we're starting to understand a little better. A few more points before we come to it, because this is a very important issue, because you can see as other people of other faiths, just to get the congregation from leaving, they'll do juggling tricks, magicians, mm -hmm. bands, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. And from one church to the next or one place to the next, everything is different. But in Islam, it's the perfect way of life. Everything is there. You just have to follow, submit. Yeah, yeah. you know, the ends don't justify the means in yeah. Islam, right? The ends do not justify the means. And this mm -hmm. is really, really important. You know, in Christianity and all these other things we're seeing these days, sometimes they're saying, hey, the ends will justify the means. Yeah. And they don't even think about the values that they're losing out because mm -hmm. of this, the principles that they're overlooking because of this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? All these are values and principles that are set in, set in stone. It's not only important to just get there, it's important how we get there as well. Gotcha. So some closing comments and suggestions for those who sincerely want to follow this way of life, how it has been ordained by the creator of the heavens and earth. And they don't want to get into things that have been added by man. Give some advice to that sincere individual, those individuals, please. I think my sincere advice to those people who really want to follow the, follow the truth would be to realize that Islam is evidence-based. Okay? In medicine, you know, when we practice medicine, before we come to a patient and we want to give them the right medicine, we don't just say, hey, you know what, it's, it's great to just give them, give them any medi medicine, yeah. but rather we give them the medicine that is evidence-based, that is evidence behind it. We've trialed it on hundreds of patients, and we know it to work, vast majority of the, of the time, 95%, 99% of the time. So we know this is right, for example. So for example, you just have a common cold. We're not going to give you antibiotics, because vast majority of common cold, 60% of the time, it's viruses. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So in the same way, Islam is evidence-based. The Prophet ﷺ kept on focusing on that. Allah says in the Quran, in جَاءَكُمْ بِيَا uh, or you believe, if a untrustworthy person comes to you with information, then verify it. We know in Islam, for example, we don't just accept any hadith, any narration. We accept a hadith that is authentic because it has a chain of narration back to Rasulullah. So what I'm saying is, Islam is about knowledge. The first word, word revealed to Rasulullah was Iqra, read. The Quran comes from the word qara'a, to read. So the, uh, and, and the greatest miracle of the Prophet was a book that is meant to be read. Yeah. So our deen is about knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's about evidence-based. And our practice is evidence-based. We don't just practice anything. We practice based on the evidence of the Qur'an and from the authentic sunnah that has been proven directly to be authentic and from the Prophet What can give us more satisfaction than that? Yeah. Knowing that we are following something that is evidence-based. Mm -hmm. In the same way, when we help patients, we know it's evidence-based. We have, we have certainty in our heart that, you know what, we're doing the best thing we can for the patient. 
in the same way we should be with our religion. How can we follow a book? How can we follow a ruling that we don't know the evidence for? Mm -hmm. Right? And this is my advice to people. Whenever you do things, do it evidence-based. Thank you Thank very you. much. May God Almighty, the Creator, Allah reward you for being with Eddie. Yeah. The pleasure is all mine. Well, I hope you got to benefit. I surely did. This is something that's very simple. If it's sanctioned by the Creator of the heavens and the earth, if there's a basis for it, the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, he explained it to us, he taught it to us in matters of deen, religion, then we do it, we submit to it. Otherwise, we don't need it. And with that said, we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم فلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم يَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍّ لَهَا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ وَالْقَمَرَ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلَ حَتَّى عَادَ كَالْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون. The DVDs for Dawa, as Allah has said in the Quran in Surah Nahl 16:125, "Udu ila sabili Rabbika bil hikmati." Invite all to the way of your Lord with. Wisdom, beautiful preaching, and reason with them in ways that are best. And this is a great opportunity for you to take up the obligation, take up the call, as Allah has told you to do, and share this beautiful message with the world. Islam, submission to the one God. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up worshiping God is one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It has attended our faith to. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord, I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.